What's up, everybody? Welcome back to Van Wagon Sports. Today, I'm going to be doing a, you know, kind of original video, I would like to think. I'm going to be comparing my NHL draft rankings, which are right here. Um, the, the first 15, at least. I'm going to be pairing, uh, comparing the top 15 of my draft rankings to the Hockey News draft rankings. I, I just got this magazine about a week ago. I have taken a quick skim through the rankings. Um, definitely a lot of things I don't agree with, and that will be coming when I look at these draft ra rankings, um, my own at least. And my draft rankings are probably about a month old, so um, do not, you know, do not uh, insult me too badly. I haven't updated them in a while, but this is the only printed copy I have of them, so it's a copy I gotta work with. So anyways, Let's begin here at the number one overall pick. So for the hockey news, their number one overall pick is Owen Power. You can see right there from the University of Michigan. And my number one uh, is Matthew Beniers from the University of Michigan. And I have him number one. Um, basically, I think that both these guys are great. I think they're both amazing players. But I just think that Beniers has a little bit more of that kind of potential maybe not as much potential as power but I definitely think he's going to be a much more versatile and useful NHL player if he doesn't reach his peak unlike Owen Power so number two now this is the first pick I don't agree with and I really don't agree with this one Simone Edmondson at number two are you kidding me like look at this Simone Edmondson number two um, I have Simone Edmondson at number 11 I feel like the boomer bust potential is definitely there. I just didn't really see that much from his game this year that I should put him in the top 10. I think he's going to be a good top four guy. He can't pass the puck to save his life, but if that's an issue that gets ironed out, yeah, good top four offensive defenseman for sure. So I don't think I see him as the number two prospect in this draft. Um, my number two is William Eklund from Sweden as well, um, and I think Eklund just loads better than Edvinson. Um, number three, the hockey news has Canadian winger Dylan Gunther. You can see right there, the top three. I have Dylan Gunther um, at number four. My number three is Owen Power, so I do have Power in the top three, but I think that, you know, Power, and compared to one to three, I think that Owen Power is honestly the third best player right now coming out of this draft. I feel like he needs another year or two, um, maybe in the AHL or back at Michigan. Uh, well, I feel like Ben Ears can maybe come over and make an impact right away. Um, yeah, let's move on. Number four, Hockey News has Swedish winger William Eklund. I'm okay with that. At least Eklund's in the top five. I My rule is if you put Eklund in the top five, I'm okay with that. At number uh, five or number four, I have uh, Dylan Gunther. So Hockey News has Gunther at three. I have him at four. I have Eklund at two. They have him at four. I'm okay with that 100%. Um, you know, just slightly different variations of kind of the top five mainly except for Simone Edmondson who I have at 11 and at number five now the hockey news has Matthew Beniers you can see right there Matthew Beniers um, I have him number one obviously at number five I have Jesper Wallstedt and uh, I think Jesper Wallstedt's a super underrated player in this mock draft just because he's goalie I think in terms of talent Jesper Wallstedt has top five talent and definitely top five potential in this draft um, I think he'd be the best player uh, slash goalie coming out. I think Jesper Wallstedt could be the best thing that came out of this draft personally um, And again, I have been years at one so quite a bit of a difference there between me and the hockey news But that's okay at number six the hockey news has Luke Hughes. You can see there. I'm okay with that. That's totally fine at number six. I have um, Ken Johnson. I feel like Ken Johnson's just very good not much of a defensive game for Ken Johnson but definitely a player who I feel could make a huge offensive impact in the NHL one day, so that's an okay pick. At number seven, the Hockey News has Brant Clark. You can see right there, um, who played in Slovakia this past season. And at number seven, I have Luke Hughes. So again, not much of a difference. So, so far, other than uh, one or two picks, uh, Edmondson and Beniers, our mock drafts or our draft rankings are pretty, pretty similar. Um, Luke Hughes at seven for me. Um, Brant Clark at seven for them. Pretty, pretty good, uh, pretty even ranking. I really like Brant Clark. I think he's a top 10 player in this draft. I just don't think, uh, I just think that Luke Hughes is slightly better, which they do too. And at number eight for the Hockey News, they have uh, Ken Johnson, who I have at number six. Uh, and at number eight, I have Brant Clark. So again, the three players right there are the same three players, except for me, 
there in a different order. So I got Johnson, Hughes, and then Clark, and they got uh, Hughes, Clark, and then Johnson. So <laughs> pretty much just a reverse order, but that's okay because they're the basically the same exact ranking. So let's move on to number nine. We're going to the next page now. And this, I think, is the, is the biggest deviation I have um, between our two draft rankings. At number nine, they have Canadian Mason McTavish. Now, I would rank Mason McTavish a little bit higher than I have him here. Still not a lot higher. I have Mason McTavish number 29. I just really... I mean, this was before the U18s when I made and finalized these draft rankings. So, 29, I'd probably move him up to maybe the low teens, high 20s but still not a lot of movement for me personally. Um, I think that Mason McTavish is a great player. I think he'll turn into a great top six sniper. I mean, he's he's awesome. I just don't really see it there. At number nine, I have Chaz Luchis, who I think is a much better option than Mason McTavish in any world. I think Luchis is a better player, a better, he's, be, he's basically a better version of Mason McTavish, I think so. Number 10, hockey news. They have Chaz Luchis, um, which I'm okay with that as well. I have Luchis at 9. At number 10, I have Fabian Liesel. Um, I think Liesel's a great player as well. Just really offensive, defensive, like a great two-way kind of speed, skill kind of guy. So really good player, really underrated in this draft um, just because he's playing in the SHL and isn't putting up amazing numbers because of ice time. But Chaz Luchis... He put up a goal per game this year. Like, that's insane. So, number 10, that's okay. At number 11, the Hockey News has goaltender Jesper Wallstedt. So, quite a bit of deviation there. Six-pick deviation. I have Wallstedt at 5. They have him at 11. Um, like I said earlier, I have Simone Edvinson at number 11. Just because I feel like Edv Edvinson, like a boomer bust type of player, I feel like if he, you know, he just becomes a solid NHL or good top four offensive defenseman. It's going to be there. At number 12, this is a perfect, perfect pick, and they actually have this guy ranked higher than I do. Um, Fyodor Zvechkov, the Russian center. I love Fyodor Zvechkov. I currently have him ranked um, number 20, it says here, but I think I have him at 15 or uh, 16 right now. So, again, the Hockey News has him higher than me. Good on them. I love that. I love Fyodor Zvechkov recognition. One of my favorite players in this draft. Just a great underrated two-way game. One of the best defensive games in this draft. You could kind of compare him to an Anton Lundell for last year's draft. And uh, I just love Fyodor Zvechkov. At number 12, I have Atu Ra too. Um, he probably drops a little bit, um, maybe to 17 or 18 in my brand new draft rankings, which I have to make before the draft. So I will I will get on that. But I definitely think that, you know, Zvechkov and Ra too. Good defensive players. I think that Zvechkov, though, is a better version of Ratu, mainly because um, he has more of an offensive game and more offensive potential. So that's good. Number 13 now. Three more picks to go. And number 13 is Cole Sillinger at number 13. Oh, why do I say 13 so much? Jeez. Um, but 13, Cole Sillinger. At number 13, I have Oscar Olesen from Sweden. Um, you know, just both really good players. Cole Sillinger, more of a more of an offensive player playing for CU Falls, really good shooter. And uh, Oscar Olison, um, just again another really good shooter. Both really good shooters. Similar size. Real, really not a lot of deviation between the two. Um, at number 14 now for the hockey news, they have a Russian uh, center slash winger Nikita Chibrikov. And I have, uh, at number 14, Zachary Leroux from the QMJHL. I think that Zachary Leroux had a pretty underrated season. I think he's definitely a top 15 prospect in this draft. Um, he put up the points. He's a good two-way power forward kind of player who's kind of like a Tom Wilson, if you really think about it. He really gets under under players' skin. He really can, he, he definitely can do that. Um, I really do like Leroux, um, and I think that he's going to be a great top six player one day. So now moving on to the final pick um, from the hockey news that I'm going to review, and that is number 15 because that is the lottery, and that is Canadian defenseman Corson Coolmans at 15. Um, I have Corson Coolmans down quite a bit. Um, I don't even know where he is. I think I have him higher in my new draft rankings, but yeah, I have him ranked 47th here. Um, definitely going to have to bump him up in my new draft rankings, but I really did like what Corson Coolmans did 
in the uh, U18s and Junior A for Brooks. I just really liked all of it. Um, the U18 tournament was kind of the real pusher for me to put Coolman's in my first round. If he didn't perform, I was going to keep him in the second, maybe early second, but uh, he had a great U18, so I definitely have to put him in the first round. Um, and at 15, I have Simone Robertson from Sweden. Another really good player um, who the Hockey News actually has ranked 32, so they barely have Simone Robertson in their first round, but that is the top 15 uh, for mine and the Hockey News um, rankings compared. You guys can choose who you prefer. Probably the Hockey News. It's a bit more up-to-date. Uh, my, my rankings aren't really up-to-date, but some guys who I do want to touch on that I think the Hockey News either underrated or overrated. I think they overrated Mason McTavish. I don't think he's that good. I think they slightly overrated Nikita Chibrikov. Uh, slightly overrated Corson Kuhlmans. Um, definitely overrated Carson Lambos. I don't think he's the 17th best prospect. He hasn't shown anything to prove that he is. Um, I think that they underrated Xavier Borgo. He played great this year. Um, excellent, excellent player, um, Xavier Borgo. Um, I think they definitely underrated Fabian Liesel. Fabian Liesel is sitting at 27, and he's a guy who could be... Um, easily a top five pick in this draft so having him at 27 is not very good he has excellent and kind of endless potential um they overrated zach dean who's at 29 i see him more of a mid-second late second kind of guy uh sasha pastor job i think is underrated as well i think pastor job is probably a top 20 player in this draft and i also think they underrated simone robertson who's at 32 and that's probably about as far as i'm gonna go i don't want to push into like the 70s and saying they underrated a guy like kisikov or whatever even though they did, but that's going to be the video. So this was a fun one to put together. Kind of just a video that I want to do just to compare my my rankings to, you know, what real professional scouts are thinking. I think in terms of at least that top 10, it's pretty similar. And uh, I think me and the scouts or whatever are thinking kind of the same thing. So maybe, maybe I got the mind of a scout. But anyways, <laughs> that's going to do it for this video. Thank you all so much for watching. Um, if you enjoyed it, please hit the like button and subscribe. It uh, really helps out the channel. If you don't want to, though, no pressure. I'm just glad that you watched this video. So, again, I say this probably three times at the end of every video and then I get sidetracked. Good old ADHD. Thank you all so much for watching. Catch you in the next one. But for now...